Hi, uh, good afternoon. Uh, I know like everyone is tired after lunch and feeling sleepy, but I don't want to make you guys bored. Um, so I'll go back to my topic today, a sustainable solution for underprivileged community. But I mean, can you a topic to choose Korasi? I'll tell you a little background about this. Uh, so basically, as you know, it's Humanity Foundation. It's a non-profit organization that working with the underprivileged children and rural women by providing them free education and also empowering them with crafting and art training in rural Bangladesh. So currently, IHF working into the three districts in Bangladesh and educating over 700 children so far since 2010. So before starting my topic, like before going to the deep down discussion, I'll give you two stories about a wonder girl and about a superman. Wonder girl. I call her wonder girl. I met her in 2017 during the you know, there was a flood disaster in Bangladesh. So, my first assumption about her, that she's a school student, and she's doing some, like, you know, house, household work. So, I simply went there, and I asked, what are you doing? And she said, I'm, like, you know, preparing the food. I said, do you cook? And she said, yes, I can. So I said, do you go to school? She said, I don't. But if you notice, she's wearing a school dress. And so I asked, like, but you are wearing a school dress, and you said you don't go to school. And she said, I got this dress in a flood relief to an NGO. She wants to go to school, but her parents cannot afford education, and there is no school. That's why she don't go to school. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you more detail about her. By the way, her name is Roxana Khatun. And the Superman. Why Superman? <laughs> uh, basically, he born and brought up in Borishal, but uh, there was a natural disaster, and he, they had to move somewhere, like somewhere to find a shelter. And they find a shelter in North Bengal. Just, it's between Saitpur and Dinajpur. I don't know if you heard the name of this, Upujela and Jela. It's in Nilfamari district and Rangpur division. So when he came there, he had two children, a wife, and few goats and chicken. That's it. And he wanted to settle somewhere, but he couldn't rent any place to live. So he managed somehow, like, and he managed this through an NGO, like there's tea and bamboos and all. And he made a small house there to live with no neighbor. It takes 30 to 40 minutes from the town. It has no electricity. It has no communication. It has nothing there. And they started living there. And why Superman? Because that his one decision leads a big family now. The family called the community called Hotat Slum. It's called Hotat Bosti because it settled suddenly. There was nothing. It was just a big field, like a jungle. And they built a community, and that's why it's called Hotat Slum. I know the name is very strange, but that's how it's called. And this is the situation currently. 
from last 17 years. This is how they're living. This is one family house, and seven people lived there. They had these two beds to sleep, eat, and do whatever they want to. The bathrooms for about 50 people using this bathroom. So they have the six bathrooms that they use. They have the shower place. And this is their like entertainment way of like Ludo or Karam. This is how, because their days start with sun and it ends with the sun because there's no electricity. And it has uh, 300 people living there. So what 300? It's around 320, 22. And there was about 65 children, those who never been to, never been to school before. And guess what? How they are living? What is the situation? In this world, currently, everything is accessible. Everything is available. It's just because of the proper distribution of resources, they're still living in the dark. Just 30 minutes from the town, they're living in the dark. So, you know, the f when I visited there, I had so many questions. Since my background is nonprofit and development sector, because I grew up in a business family, and my family wanted me to join family business, but you know I I had to leave and take the decisions to uh, to these positions, and I started IHF in 2010 during my early university year. So. After talking with the families, I, I was thinking what to do, what to do. Because since we work with education, the, our initial thing was like we set up uh, something with education related. But it wasn't the first priority for them. When an NGO works with a community, they always should consider from the community perspective instead of what they can provide. It's more important to know what they want, what is their priority. So we often give them what they don't need it now, probably later. So I had to set the priorities. I, I come back from there and then I talk to my team and I really wanted to do something for them. So we worked for a week, we spent time on it because we had a real interest to bring the change for them. And we set the five priorities for this community. And the first priority was providing proper water and sanitation. Because when we went there, they have no pure water system. Uh, they bring the water from pond there was a small pond, and they drink it. They don't even know that you know, they have to boil the water. They have to drink. So, and that leads a lot of diseases and a lot of problems. So, you know, so anyone wants to work with the community, the first priority should be that, you know, what is on the top? So the top was the water and sanitation. So we set up a water system. Initially, it was a tube well, but we are still working uh, to set up a water purification system. We are having conversation with some organization to set up so that they can get the proper water, pure water, and also like you know, some construction works on their washrooms and toilets so that they have, and it's not about going on a clean sanitation, but also it should have some privacy. Because of course people need privacy, especially for the girls and women. 
So that was the first step. The second one was the ensuring healthcare. As you know, a lot of people, like as I said, that water and sanitation that leads a lot of like health issues. So we had to solve this problem. And we saw a lot of people, they don't know what is vitamins. They don't know what is actually uh, vaccination, that it's important for the children. And during my visit, I found there was four lady was pregnant. And it was, and they do the delivery in a very traditional way. Because, you know, if you go on a town, they will, they will tell you to do the Caesar. And that's, that's for 10, 15,000 taka, and you cannot just hear. Yeah. So, so it's very important. So we, we thought of doing something, and we started talking with the community uh, to do the health. And we, you know, we had a friend who is a doctor. We know a lot of hospitals, so we engaged them. And we have done few workshops on health issues and, you know, have done some medical facility there. And the third priority was the importance of education. But it's not the typically education that, you know, we are providing. It's about the changing mindset of the people in the community. Because it's important to know and understand that what is important in education. Because they think that you know, they can send their children to work to earn money instead of school. So they never feel that you know, education is that important. So our most challenging part was to change their mindset. And somehow, we have done it, and that 65 children, like 65 children, they are now enrolled in school, and they're having education from last six months. The next priority was the empowering the community. So it's the empowering the community to, you know, to provide them vocational training and uh, like other training resources. So as I said, it's Humanity Foundation work also with the women, and we have a crafting center called Pratiba where we provide the crafting training, and that's how we are ensuring some vocational training for the women in the community so that they can earn money and the last one is creating sustainability. It's not about giving them the training and their earning money and spending. It's about saving money, sustainability, and using that money to generate more money for them. So that was the five priority we set. And, you know, I think as I believe and we believe as a team that this should be the a development model for any community. So this is all about the sustainable solution. We think this five solution uh, can be a model for a community develop. And I'm going to end my talk here today. But if you'd like to know more about Hotat Slum, and if you'd like to advise us something, if you have any feedback, feel free to contact me. Thank you so much.